welcome back to another Daily Walk. Well, I wanted to talk this week about families, the family unit, and the Christian. However, it was too broad of a topic, uh, too much of a topic for a Daily Walk. There's tons and tons of scriptures. So I decided I'm going to do that on Thursday this week for our Thursday show. All right, but today I want to cover one aspect I'm not going to cover because there's not as much direct scripture around it, and it's something that, that's going to interface with a lot of you. We're going to talk about the dysfunctional family and the Christian, because this topic here is certainly an, an interesting one. It's a hot-button issue, and many people are going to say, well, I can relate. We had a dysfunctional family. There's going to be other people that say, well, all families are dysfunctional because we're all born in Adam. We all sin, all this kind of stuff. And uh, I'm going to first, we're going to push back against that. That is absolute and utter nonsense. There is a radical difference between a family which the members sin and a dysfunctional family itself. So what do I mean by this? Um, a dysfunctional family is not defined by the, by the uh, presence of sin. Because we all sin. There is very possible to have functional families who can act appropriately with one another. And in light of that, still engage in sin. The difference is a dysfunctional family does not know how to deal with sin or misconduct or whatever else you're using to talk about the, the basic principles. And so that is really what I want to talk about because I come from a dysfunctional family. There was a lot of crazy interplays. Everything was always shoved under the rug. All of the sins are you can't talk about it, whether in private or in public or whatever else. And that's why I wrote my book, Half My Life. If you read my book about my upbringing, you will find that there's multiple ways of being abused uh, in a family, and I've experienced them all. And somehow I've came out with an appropriate understanding of interpersonal relations and, and how not to be a dysfunctional person myself. You know, I not to medicate yourself with drugs and alcohol or uh, engage in all of these other principles because a dysfunctional family is not a family that is absent of sin. It is a family that cannot deal with the consequences of sin appropriately. And that's really what the difference happens to be. And so how do we as Christians live in a dysfunctional family? Well, the principle that we have to keep in mind is that as a Christian, we have to balance with a dysfunctional family. We have to balance the fact that our family members may not be healthy, particularly if we have gotten ourselves healthy and having to go back. If you absolutely or hate going back for holidays, uh, whatever else, around your family, you probably come from a dysfunctional family, all right? And so what we have to figure out how to do is how to balance Christ in the commands to honor our mother and father while at the same time placing up boundaries and looking at what is appropriate in a dysfunctional family. So boundaries is your first good principle. What does the scripture have to say about boundaries? Well, the fact is not a whole ton. Maybe we can, just borrowing from quick memory, uh, there's people who want to not eat and just live on handouts. He who does not work does not eat, Paul writes to the Thessalonians. So that's one principle. Hey, you have to have a degree of, uh, of uh, uh, responsibility in your life. One of the factors with boundaries is learning when to say you can do this and when to say you can't, learning what is appropriate in certain circumstances. I'm going to go ahead and share this story here because it's quite telling. There was one point in time where I was dating a lady who had two kids. And in this, um, uh, in this relationship, uh, having a dysfunctional mother who's like very gift-giving orientated, she's like, you know, what can I get her kids for Christmas? I said, well, let me get back to you on that. Because we had not been dating very long, and the previous relationship was not particularly good. And so we, uh, her and I, talked about this and decided we don't want to bring an external uh, family into this because we weren't sure if this was going to be a long-term relationship or not. And so I went back and I told my mother, um, we have talked about and decided that we do not want you to get the kids anything. Um, and at this point in time, they weren't coming up. You know, the, the, the lady was, but the kids were staying with grandparents. And so we just were keeping that completely out of the way. And then for the next week, she continues to ask, 
like every single time I saw her or she called, what can I get the kids? I said nothing. What can I get the kids? Nothing. What can I get the kids? Nothing. We've talked about this. Nothing. For a very good reason. So we go out, finally have the Christmas dinner or whatever else, which is out at a restaurant. And, you know, it's late. We have a three-hour drive to get back. Uh, back to the town we were both living in and so we said well let's uh, let's get it my mother's like hey wait I got gifts for your kids <laughs> so I had like about 30 seconds to figure out what to do I go back and I said I told the, the girl I said look I told my mother not to have any gifts I said I can do one of three things I said we can either a accept them and give them to your kids I said B we can um, accept them and not give them to your kids or I said we sh I said we can do three not accept them because I was very clear and I said, that is the hard thing to do, but it is the appropriate thing to do because boundaries have been violated. So as a Christian, what do we do? Let's analyze this from a Christian perspective. Of course, I rejected the gifts. My mother went into a crying spell and then spun the whole rest of the dysfunctional family into a crazy topsy-turvy thing and I avoided everybody for six months because that's sometimes what you need to do. So let's analyze this from the Christian perspective. What is the situ situation? Well, how, is you, how do you honor your mother and your father in this? Well, I thought it was very appropriate. What, do you, what should we get? Let me, rather than me just coming up with a decision on somebody else's kids, let's go ahead and talk about it with the actual parent of those kids first. Okay, let's do this. Well, the parent of the kid and I have decided we do not want external people involved at this point in time. And so I went back honoring my mother's request, what can we get them? And I said, hey, we want you to get them nothing because we have very good reasons. And so with this, um, <laughs> my mother was not willing to respect that boundary. So. Is it good and healthy for me to accept them anyway and either give them or not give them to the kids? Is that respecting? Is that honoring your mother and your father? Some people would say it is. I say it's not. Because honoring your mother and your father sometimes is to stand up and say, look, I made this decision what is best for me. I honor you best by living an appropriate and healthy life in this world. And that is the best honor. Now, for me, the best thing as I wrestled with this and I came from this dysfunctional family, it was so screwed up and I became a Christian. I was in my early 20s. And I remember the one day um, I, I drive to uh, this baptism uh, group. Uh, we were doing baptisms out of the lake. And so I said to the pastor, hey, you know, I have this functional family stuff and, uh, you know, can we talk about it, whatever else? And literally this guy, and I didn't realize at the time, he was a great guy, but he was a horrible counselor. And so we get in the truck and he's driving down. We go down and I start to say this and he cuffs me off after like one or two sentences and says, well, the Bible says honor your father and your mother. And so there's no way out of that, period. No more discussion. Like no more discussion about, hey, um, her mother's, my mother's husband actually attacked me. What do you do when your parents are actually attacking you? Oh, just honor your mother and your father. Ma, the father and your mother, you stand there and take it. You know, like, no, you don't do that crap. And as I was reading James Montgomery Boyce and uh, his discussion on the commandments, he did two chapters on his book, Foundations of the Christian Faith. And his section on the commandments for me were absolutely the best and the most telling about how to do this. Because implicit in the commands to honor your father and your mother is their commands to honor you back and maybe slash to be honorable. In other words, these commandments are written to people who the parents are following God. If they're not following God, you do not have the obligation to honor them by injecting their heroin into your veins or becoming an alcoholic because that's what they like to do. That is not appropriate. And that is them violating God's order first. And when they are doing that, they are now leading you down a bad path. And of course, it is better to have a millstone hung around your neck and be cast into the sea than for you to lead a little one to stumble. And so this is what the balance is. There is no simple answer. There's no um, verse, thou shalt do this or that in the scripture because thou haveth a dysfunctional family. But learning how to live in the midst of it while honoring Christ, respecting them in every place that you can as they are 
doing the right things in the natural order. Now, I know you may not have gotten a ton out of that, particularly if you're a dysfunctional person and you're like, I don't know what to do, I have a crazy family. Let me give you this last tiny piece of advice. You're going to find a lot of Christians who do not understand that you have a dysfunctional family. You will have Christians that when you're like, I don't go home for Christmas because it's too crazy, they just don't understand because they come from long generations of people who pretend to be saved. <laughs> and I'm going to word it that way. Um, not that all of them are. There are long generations of very good sound Christians that have progressed on. But if you're coming from a radically dysfunctional family and you've attended church your whole life, chances are there's no real saving faith there. Because as John MacArthur said at one point in time, two people who know Jesus are generally going to get, a, get together. Get along together you know um, and that's kind of the the basic principle so my basic advice is um, if you find yourself in that circumstance understand there's going to be a lot of Christians who do not understand your primary and first task is going to be get into the scriptures and understand who God is that is what your first task is going to be and there are Christians out there who do deal with this. I would have a look at my book, Half My Life, because it really talks about how I came out to be saved coming from a background with crazy dysfunction in it. With that, we're going to go ahead and leave this one here for now. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy your daily walk and our Lord.